Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, Assalamualaikum Pakistan. Last time we were talking about the importance of honesty and how it is the cornerstone which heralds as a beacon of light for the whole organization to create a conducive environment in which there can be opportunities, possibilities and growth for every employee based upon merit and based upon the standards of honesty and also of truth. Now, we basically were talking about in the last session the, the honesty statement of General Electric. Now, the person that has turned General Electric around is Jack Walsh. Now, Jack Walsh came into General Electric, which was facing billions of dollars of losses, and he turned it around into a multi-billion dollar profitable organization, which focused upon certain values that we are going to talk about today. So, when Jack Walsh was asked that how were you able to transform this particular organization, then he said it was through responsible leadership. But then there was another question that what is responsible leadership? How can we promote responsible leadership? How can we promote honesty? So then Jack Wall said that let me write a book. So he wrote an anecdotal book which is called Leadership and Four E's. And it tends to symbolize ethical leadership, which we were talking about in so many of the past sessions. Now, in this particular very interesting book, which is called Leadership and Four E's, we are now going to dwell into the different elements of the four E's and see how it can be implemented and practiced across different organizations. So, we look at leadership and four E's, and this is a book also, which all of you can read. Now, leadership and four E's is hinged upon the four E's. And usually, when we are talking uh, about empathy and sympathy uh, and traits like antipathy and, uh, and also uh, apathy, then these four E's also tend to click in. Now, if we look at the four E's, then the first E stands for energy. Jack Walsh basically states that visibility is very important. If leadership is not visible, then employees and subordinates do not respond in the right way. So, the first E is basically energy, that a leader has to be energetic, has to be visible. It basically again connotes with a philosophy which is called MBWA, management by walking around, that you don't sit in your office, you walk around. You go and see the work which is being done. You go and see how work is being done. You go and see what type of work is being done. You go and recognize the employees at the place of work. So, you should have high energy. Let me tell you, there was this gentleman who was uh, made the chairman of a very large organization in Pakistan. And when he became the chairman, that organization was facing billions of rupees of losses. So, when he came in uh, for the first time and he walked through the corridors of the head office, and when he came into the office uh, of the chairman, and his personal staff officer came and asked him that, sir, what should I do for you? Uh, basically thinking that he would ask for maybe a dozen SUVs and uh, a complete army uh, of servants and what not, uh, the gentleman says that, please bring me a broom. So the personal staff officer got shocked and said, sir, are you, are you saying you want a broom? He said, yes. So the personal staff officer brought the broom. The chairman just uh, took the broom, walked out of his office, went along the corridor, and there was uh, a little bit uh, of uh, dirt uh, in the corner and one or two pieces of paper. He basically brushed them, put it into the shovel, and then threw them into the dustbin. He did not say anything at all. Then in the evening, he saw that there were a lot of gardeners sitting. But the lawns were not beautiful. So he stopped his car. And he went up to the gardeners, he sat with them, had the talk shock with them, had some smiles, cracked some jokes, and then said, please give me a small shovel. He takes it and he starts doing gardening. And he tells the Malis or the gardeners that every week, twice a week, he would do gardening. You know what happened? The whole organization started getting cleaner. And all of the lawns became beautiful. Then after a few weeks, he thought that he'll go into the plant. 
so he went up to the plant and because this was a huge huge industrial complex there was this cart this golf cart for him he said no i don't want to golf cart i want to walk so he walked around and he knew that there are some good employees so wherever he would see one of them he would pat them that i've heard that you are going doing a great job for the organization and wherever he would see that there is something wrong he would just pointed out that let's get something right it was lunch time and there was a lot of walk taking place everyone was hungry so he was asked that let's go to the executive dining room and he said no i want to have lunch uh, with my workforce so he went to the workforce dining room and he just pulled a chair and sat with one of the workers and they started eating together and he said the the quality of the chapatis is not good and the the stew or the salan should be much better so he said every month once a month i would randomly just come over to eat and you know what the work environment improved and the quality of food drastically improved so have energy leadership is about energy and when you have energy when you are exhibiting good work ethics and good work practices then you start emanating energy it's just like a flu you have flu you give flu to other people you have energy you give energy to other people so the second e is energize which basically means motivate but motivate through your actions not through your words not through sermons not through speeches it's important to energize your employees to make them want to make a difference to do better because they emulate you because they look up to you and because they believe in you the the third e is very interesting this word starts with an e and ends with an e the two letters in between many times i conduct this exercise and many people say sir it must be else and i say you have energy others have energy with all of that energy you are jumping around and then someone says okay else that means maybe something else well that's not motivating could you guess another word which starts with an e and ends with an e just two alphabets in between can i hear it ease oh that means you are doing something with motivation and then you suddenly stop and want to take a rest everything would just fall down so should i ask my daughter in class 5th which could be the third word aha edge edge you have energy you exuberate energy around you you do things a little differently a little improved have an edge something we talked about earlier the kaizen approach of the japanese is about creating edge look at what sony has done toyota has done other nissan has done mitsubishi has done they create an edge in what they do and they become global enterprises but the fourth e is the most important e in the book more than 60% of the book is attributed to the fourth e so the three e's have 40% and the fourth e has 60% and this also starts with an e and ends with an e aha uh-huh, i'm i'm getting i'm getting many words it's execute if you have energy you energize people you create an edge but you don't execute it it's counterproductive don't do it what is important is to implement winning or losing is not important failure is not something which should be shunned away actually failure is something which leads to success so don't fear failure implement it if you do a great job excellent make it a case study and replicate it if you fail no problem learn what should not be done don't do it again do things differently 
do them better. The four E's, energy, energize, edge, execute. Put to them together, great value-based leadership, leadership which is ethical, integrity focused, and honesty prone. That leads to something which is the winning combination. So Jack Walsh also wrote a book on winning. Winning doesn't mean someone's loss is going to be my profit or my win. We can create win-win situations. So we can bring stakeholders together. We can create an environment of collaboration, collaborate and collaboration. We can win and we can make others win with us. And you know, that is something the, Jap the Japanese, the Koreans, and the Chinese have done very well. And just look how they have been able to transform their societies and their corporate world. So winning is about collaborating. Winning is about taking everyone together. And winning is about making everyone a winner. Where there are no losers. And that is a consequence of leadership and four E's. So create a winning environment in the organization. Jack Walsh in his book, Winning, also talks about three types of employees, the A type, the B type, and the C type. He says that the A type are about 10%, the B type about 80%, and the C type about 10%. It's just a thumb rule. Now, the A type are the high performers, are those individuals who are the movers and shakers are those who, individuals who are exuberant, are those individuals who are the go-getters, are those individuals who have high intellect, who tend to sweep people off their feet, who are the deal makers, but they compromise on their values and are sometimes corrupt. You know what Jack Walsh says about them? Eliminate them. They're the bad eggs of the basket. They will spoil the whole organization because they will negatively inspire and overwhelm the type B who are average performers, have average aspirations, who see the organization as a place of work and the fulfillment of their basic needs, who don't want to excel but want to have a good average performance so they can climb the ladder of success who don't want to trample other people on their own feet, but are basically content with what they have and what they are doing. These B-type are the loyal employees of the organization, the backbone of the organization. You don't want them to be inspired by the A-type. And the C-type are those employees who are underperformers, but are honest, they are loyal with the organization. Jack Walsh says that they should be pulled up. They should be pulled up, brought into the B. And the B type should go into the A, but who are honest, but who are high value leaderships and tend to constitute the very goodness of humanity within them. And if there are any other A's with negative qualities, they should be eliminated from the organization. And also the bottom C type, if they do not go higher in their performance. So he basically created this formula of winning, winning based upon values, doing away with employees who do not perform or employees who have a negative value system and creating an environment which is conducive, which promotes loyalty, which promotes camaraderie, which promotes teamwork, which promotes stakeholder ownership of the organization, which tends to promote a very important aspect of honesty and truth. Because those organizations become long-term sustainable organizations. And that is the essence of leadership, behavioral leadership, and 
behavioral ethics. Thank you so much.